Hi everyone, welcome back to The Habby. I hope you're doing well. Um, again, I'm gonna apologize for not uploading as frequently as I'd hoped I would. Um, I thought I'd be doing more since I'm done with school, but for some reason, um, found ways to make myself busy again and again, and things have been coming up, so I have not been able to sit down and film. This is the first video I'm sitting down and filming in more than three months now. Um, so apologies for that, but uh, more of those videos are coming soon, w ones, that, ones that I filmed but never got the chance to edit. Um, I am back at my parents' house. I was in an apartment near school for about a year till I finished, and now that I'm done, I'm back at my parents' to save more money. Let me get to the title of this video, which is um, that I have anxiety. Um, it, it sounds very strange for me to say because I'm not... I, I mean, I don't like when people self-diagnose. I, I don't think think it's good for people to self-diagnose, but um, lately I've been thinking more about my mental health than ever before. Um, as I move beyond my teenage years and I'm into a full-fledged adult adulthood now, I guess I'm 24, so I'm, I guess I'm an adult um, number-wise. I don't know if I feel like an adult on the inside. I feel like a child sometimes, but um, I start to think more beyond just my physical health and uh, my mental well-being because that's the thing that affects my relationships with people, my outlook on the world, and you know the way I treat people in general. And that's been changing a lot recently and that's why um, I wanted to address one of the things in the mental health arena that has affected me for a long time. I just didn't really recognize it or realize it was a problem until lately when it has become a problem, when it has started becoming uh, something that consumed my everyday life. Um, and that's anxiety. And I, I, I can't say I have an anxiety disorder because, again, I'm not going to self-diagnose. I can only look at the signs, right? I, I, the next step for me to do is to go to a therapist or a doctor and really uh, figure out what's going on, figure out if it's really some sort of anxiety disorder or not. Those of you who clicked on this video, uh, having never been, uh, having never watched any of my other videos, you're probably someone that's been dealing with anxiety or thinks uh, they're dealing with anxiety, um, or you're, look, you're like me and you were doing research to figure out what anxiety even means. Um, so that's why I wanted to share this with you guys, um, and you know, how I came, came across research is, you know, by reading and doing looking at videos and that's how I came across um, th things that explain to me what anxiety really is and if I'm genuinely someone who has serious anxiety or if I'm just like every other average person that experiences everyday anxiety and I think it's more than just everyday anxiety um, and for a long time I've dealt with it in many ways and have been able to kind of cope with it and not have it be a big deal, something that consumed my life. But lately it's been it's been a little crazy. So um I've had ups and downs. Some days I'm okay. Some stages of my life I'm fine and some years I'm fine and then like I have these bouts of not depression but like really hermit like wanting to isolate myself phases every now and then. Um, and anxiety is one of the main attributing factors to this, you know, to this need to isolate myself and not want to interact with anyone whatsoever, um, not even the people that are closest to me. It's just in the past maybe six, five months that it has come up, and a lot has changed in the past five to six, my five months of my life. Um, and maybe there's something there that has to do with it, or maybe it's just this anxiety I'm talking about, but I know for sure there's been so many signs that I've just chosen to ignore and think little to nothing of. One big sign, one big aspect of anxiety that I experience on the daily is social anxiety. That's something a lot of us deal with as well, I'm sure. Um, and I thought it was something that, you know, something that everybody experiences, so it's normal for me to experience it this way as well, but um, it, it's gotten to a point where I've avoided situations that involve me being having to interact 
with more than one person. I'm, I've always been more of one-on-one -on -one kind of person, and I didn't know that why that was until I started doing the research. And I don't. I've always avoided throughout high school and college. I I commuted when I was in college, so I never had to interact with people except in a classroom setting, and even that was daunting. But I avoided going to parties, avoided going to um, any social event where you just stood there and talked to people. I always needed something to do. I couldn't just sit there and fidget. Like I, It was a frightening experience to have to sit there and, you know, like say something to this person and say something to this person and f figure out how I'm supposed to behave. What are my arms supposed to be doing? Um, so that, that was something I definitely avoided um, and didn't think much of. I just avoided those situations so I never had to deal with them. So I never had to confront that side of anxiety. Um, and then growing up, um, I always, I have always, tr I always tried to avoid going to church. And for a long time, I thought it was, you know, I thought it was there was something wrong with me. I thought, I wondered if I just wasn't as spiritually connected to God as everybody else around me was. And then there's this thing with Orthodox Habesha Eritrean churches, the services, the sermons can be really long. They're like four to five hours long. Um, but that wasn't the problem for me. I was I was ready to stand there and pray and recite and repeat things. But what I hated most was being surrounded by so many people, by so many onlookers. Um, and what made it even worse was having to go up and sing in front of people in the, in the choir. Um, I was in the choir group because everyone in their adolescence, all the teenagers, you know, everyone that's young goes up to sing at the end of the sermon. And it, it was the most frightening thing for me ever. It's still the most frightening thing to go up in front of people and sing. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was the people looking at me. And I was part of a group, so it wasn't just me by myself. I can't even imagine doing that by myself. Um, but, you know, these folks that you're supposed to respect, the elderly and the priest himself there, I, it just... I could not deal with that situation. I don't know how I got through so many Sundays doing that, but I genuinely just did not... I I would get sweaty. I would come back from singing and, like, drenched. Um, my stomach would completely flip. Um, my heart would be wanting to pound out, you know, blast out of my chest. That's how. That's how frightening that situation was. And I still managed to stand there and sing and, and make noise. Um, so for a long time, that was my problem with church. And I, I thought there was something wrong with me. I felt like I, I was doing something wrong, you know, because I felt that way about it. And little did I realize that it, like a lot of it had to do with that anxiety I was constantly feeling. Waking up every morning thinking, oh God. I do not want to do this again. I do not want to go through this day again. Just to go to church. To a lot of people, it's a normal thing. To me, it frightened me. Um, being asked to go to a friend's party or something frightened the F out of me. Didn't Wanted nothing to do with that. Um, graduation ceremonies frightened me. I, avoid, I, I wish I could avoid them. But for the sake of my parents, I go to graduation ceremonies. I've been through three big ones already, and I did not like them. Um, school parties I avoided. Prom, just couldn't even think about it. And I, I just thought I was a very antisocial person for a long time. And maybe that's the case, but the fact that I would get, like, these horrible feelings every time I thought about those things kind of led me to think that maybe there's something more to this. In extension to that, everyday things, like, being in the office or being at school where you might be surrounded by a lot of people and you're kind of pushed into interacting with people i, I didn't really like i like to, to keep to myself i go through hallways with my head down and i walk really fast um i've learned to kind of fix that a little lately but uh it's easier for me to not interact with people um it's easier to deal with that than to deal with making small talk and conversing with people and trying to get something out of myself to, to say something to people. Things like waking up every day to go to work or to school, you know? Going from my comfortable room, quiet, peaceful, out to the public, 
where there's tons of cars and people, that in itself causes a lot of anxiety. I know people can have panic attacks as a result of that. Thankfully, I don't get to that stage, but it still doesn't... It's an unsettling feeling waking up every day and then not wanting to be out in public. Um, wanting to isolate yourself from the moment you wake up. And it it's really... I don't want to say it's not a big deal because to some people it's like it can prevent them from getting through the day. Um, but for me, I, I found ways to deal with it, and and hopefully that's the um, hopefully I can make a video about ways I've coped with these things because clearly I'm okay in some arenas of my life, and then sometimes I'm just I'm not okay. The other major way anxiety has affected me really something that I realized lately is when I moved out and I was with, living with three other girls is that I was becoming a, like, kind of like a obsessive compulsive type wanting to clean everything, cl keep everything clean and orderly um, in my space and in the shared kitchen spaces and bathroom spaces. I like I kind of, I, I liked it in a certain way and if other people didn't do it that way then I was not happy. Like it really bothered me. Um, I, I hated seeing things out of order. And when other people who don't have the same, probably same standards, they, they're different people. They didn't, you know, they didn't grow up the way I did. So maybe that's not what they're used to. Um, but wanting that for them as well and wanting them to be on that level um, in itself, when the, when they weren't meeting those standards that I had, that I had set, um, it, it freaked me out. It bothered me a lot. Um, and I felt the need to kind of fix everything all the time. When in fact I could just let it go and focus on myself, but I felt the need to to have every, everything else that was shared clean and orderly as well. The other thing I do on a regular basis, and something that I thought everybody did as frequently as I did, when in fact actually not everybody does this and not as frequently as I do, is replaying conversations after you've had them or preparing for conversations ahead of time. And I'm not talking about job interviews or conversations with very important people or in important situations, but everyday conversations with people. With the exception of four people that are closest to me, everybody else that I come into contact with, I feel the need to rehearse the conversation before I go into it. And then when I exit the conversation, I replay everything in my head, figuring out what I said wrong, what I could have done better, even if it's a very simple, small talk conversation in the cafeteria or something. I can't wrap my head around it sometimes, how that's something that consumes my day sometimes. Sometimes it gets to a point where I'll just keep replaying that conversation until I find the ideal way to have, to have had that conversation. And it will get in the way of other things, other tasks I'm doing for that day, other things I have to take care of that day. Um, that's why school became challenging for a long time because I would get easily distracted by things like that. I found it hard to focus on just school when I when I can consume my mind with things that have happened in the past and things I could have done better, things I could have changed. Um, it, sometimes it, it, it doesn't really make sense to me how that that could consume that can consume me and my days, um, but it, it happens. Some days are okay, some days aren't. Um, and it's the same thing with phone conversations. I dread phone conversations ever since I was little. I do not like talking on the phone. Uh, with the exception of the four people that are closest to me that I'm completely comfortable uh, with and, and that I trust. Having a phone conversation, forget interviews. Interviews are probably the phone interviews are my least favorite thing in the world. Maybe not in the world, but they're the worst things possible for me. But um, just having simple conversations with people that I know over the phone, it is, it's, it's frightening. Um, again, I start kind of rehearsing what I'm going to say before I get on the phone, even if it's like a one minute, 30 second conversation. And then when I hang up the phone and exit the conversation, I'll replay everything I said and what I could have said better and how that situation, how that conversation could have gone differently. As if that's going to make anything better. But it's something I have to go through. Like, mentally, that's something I have to go through every time I have phone conversations. Um, there's a lot of times, actually, this is really bad, but a, a lot of times I won't pick up the phone if, I'm, if I don't have that courage to, like, suppress that anxiety that I feel and just talk to someone comfortably, which is rare. That feeling comes by rarely. Um, I just won't pick up. I just will not pick up. 
and then it either goes to voicemail or I'll have to return the call when I'm feeling that courage to talk to someone without feeling that anxiety, without feeling that discomfort. I don't know how else to explain it, but that's really what it comes down to. It's got, it sometimes gets to the point where I just don't pick up the phone. And then this happens rarely, but it's been happening more often than not nowadays, is I like to kind of... I find it easier to keep like a narrow tunnel vision on everything, um, of everything. I don't really like to interact with a lot of people when I'm outside the house. Um, even when I'm at home, I'd rather keep to myself and watch my shows and read my books than than talk and interact with people. And that's something that I don't remember myself doing when I was younger. When I was younger, I was very friendly and bubbly and more often than before. Nowadays, I'm just like much more closed off. And if I'm not having a great day, like if everything feels like it's coming cr crashing down and I don't have control of it, I'd rather just keep to myself and really like to be left alone. So this isolation factor is something that's kind of getting in the way of a lot of things nowadays, getting in the way of friendships and progress that I could be having in my life. Those are some of the major and minor ev everyday uh, ways that I think anxiety has affected me and is affecting me more than ever before. Um, and I really, the next step for me is to like seek out a therapist or someone who knows a lot about this topic and really talk to them. Um, cause more, I think mental health is more important than a lot of other things because it will affect the way you go about your everyday life. It'll affect your outlook on life. It'll affect the way you treat, treat people. It'll affect the way you treat yourself, which reflect in, you know, in the way you treat others. And I, like, that's the last thing I want is to, for things going on in my head to affect not just myself, but people around me and situations around me and kind of stall my progress and my growth and my ability to, to like, be a better person and treat others well. Um, so that's why I wanted to make this video, um, because there are ways that I've found, um, I, um, that have helped me cope with a lot of things. If I wasn't able to cope with some of these things in some ways, I wouldn't be where I am academically um, and career-wise. Um, I'm still able to get through work and get through school, but it, um, it doesn't take away from the fact that other arenas of my life might be lacking and might be suffering and might be stalling. So um, so I, if you are watching and you genuinely want to learn ways that I've worked on these things that I'm still working on improving things um, to help with my anxiety let me know and I'll make a separate video all in all um, if you clicked on this um, this is this is the first video you're watching by me um, um, please feel free to visit the other videos because there's more positive things I know this is more of a depressing topic but it's something that I think all of us should discuss whether we have anxiety or not mental health is just as important as physical health um, and so, uh, check out my other videos if you want something more positive to look on, to look, to look at, um, um, and continue watching videos like this because you have to know that you're not the only one. There's varying degrees of anxiety that people deal with and there's multiple ways you can, you can work on making improvements, right? So let me know if you want that video. I can make another one. Otherwise... Um, comment below with your feelings on this if you do have anxiety any levels of it how you deal with it share it with us share it with me um, um, and other topics in mental health that you would like to to discuss um, yeah thank you for watching as usual and I will see you guys in the next one bye